going to proceed with the uh, presentation by the Economic Development Advisory Committee. So you can see on the agenda we have that presentation. Uh, then there's going to be a hearing, a short hearing on uh, some open space preservation that we're going to be doing. And then we're going to be getting to that ordinance about the Transportation and Circulation Advisory Committee, uh, which really ties into the sidewalk discussion tonight. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Paul Newton and Mr. Ken Barriotaris of the Economic Development Advisory Committee to make their presentation on their strategic plan. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time tonight, and sorry to keep you waiting. about what Morris Township is and what the priority should be. 
and I know we are looking to you to help us set our agenda. We're not going to go off on a tangent. We really need to know what the priorities are. I think we also need more data, and that's something that the, uh, the committee will focus on. And then I think the other thing we need to do is you know, uh, focus on future needs of an evolving community. How are uh, preferences changing for housing, for uh, office space, so on and so forth? Okay, and students know up and straight to the screen now. Perfect. All right. Um, and the other thing I'd really love for EDAP to be, and for us to be able to do, is create a healthy dialogue and how to plan for the future, uh, engage relevant stakeholders. And obviously those stakeholders are businesses that uh, are in Morris Township, they're residents, they're commercial property owners, and they're people that are renting space within the township. So let's figure out a way to create a more healthy dialogue and find how to push Morris Township forward. Um, I think in looking through the master plan, what people will find is there are two key goals that are spelled out in the master plan that we want to maintain the residential character of the community and we want to maintain existing commercial uh, areas and try and restrict a lot of new commercial development. So it's in the master plan, that is what Morris Township aims to be, which we have to take in, into consideration. Uh, I quickly uh, just summarize here the uh, EDAC's responsibilities under the ordinance. I think it's interesting that we can group them once again, and I'm coming back to these three concepts, better data, better communication, and research for the future. And data really deals with A, uh, the responsibility is A and G, communication is B, F, H, and K, and research is C, D, and I. So those are really the what, what we're going to try and get at. Um, but the master plan uh, also needs to recognize, uh, or the master plan itself for Morris Township recognizes two key challenges that we face. The first being housing preferences. And it states clearly that baby boomers, at least this is the narrative that's out there today, baby boomers and millennials, housing preferences are moving away from large lot developments, looking access for public transit and have a more communal feel, including sidewalks, I think we heard that quite a bit, an easy drive or walk to sharing areas and other services. So I think to continue to attract residents and uh, people into the community, that's something we have to face. And the other question, the big one, is the exodus of major corporations and businesses. Um, Morris Township, most of our, and we've already started, as we know, we're starting to, to, to reference this, but we were, we built a lot of very large suburban corporate headquarters. They were built out for one large tenant. That's not the way people do businesses anymore. Um, companies are discovering drawbacks associated with large, hard to get to headquarters that limit the talent pool. Um, so we do have to think about how we redevelop what we have, and I hope the EDAC, I know the planning board's involved, the board of adjustments involved, we have a big project going on at 340 Mount Kimball Avenue, but I'm hoping EDAC, you can come to us and ask us to research, you know, what is going on there? What, what do we do to uh, keep our uh, corporate office space uh, filled? In terms of time, I'm going to skip over the next session and really get to the, the meat of the uh, strategic plan. And Kathy insisted that we follow the, the MOSA approach, uh, which is you come up with a vision and a mission statement, you define some clear objectives, some strategies, and then you actually come up with action plans. So that's what we've done. And I think the mission statement, first of all, I like to keep things really simple, right? We don't need eight different things. We need rules of three. We need to keep this really simple vision statement for EDAC should be very simple. We're tr here to help ensure that Morris Township remains a vibrant and multi-generational community. That's the goal. That's the vision. And I think the mission statement is pretty easy. We've got to promote the present. And what I mean by that is tell the story of who we are today, the historic significance of this community, the open space of this community, the, the walking trails you have here, but then we also have to anticipate the future. So that's really going to be our mission statement. This, this committee should help promote the present, get much better marketing material out there, 
um, tell Morristown's brand, Morris Township's brand, much better. I can't believe I just said that. You should fire me on the spot. Uh, and then also anticipate what's going on. What are, what are the future changes that are taking place? I have to say, whenever I've created strategic plans uh, for in business, I always thought the objectives and the targets were the hardest things. How are we going to measure our success? Um, you know, simply put, I think we've got to uh, make sure we maintain a high occupancy, high occupancy rate in our commercial offices and also make sure that those commercial offices are, um, and by doing so, you know, part of that is making sure they're attractive to what tenants want today. Um, I'd love to figure out a way to improve Morris Township's brand. Ian was talking today, a simple example of that is, how many weekends a year are there events at Ginty Field, different types of runs and athletic events? I mean, that, that it really is a drawing point. He made the simple case, do we actually ask some uh, food, food vendors to come in afterwards and get people to hang around and actually spend a little bit of money here and get the vibe of Morris Township? Um, you know, uh, I think another thing we can do is leverage infrastructure technology. There's a lot of things coming, be it solar, be it electronic vehicle, charging stations. There is money available for that. Liam's already looking into that. And obviously, EDAC, part of EDAC's ordinances was reducing traffic issues, I think, fortunately, because that is a really tough thing to do. Thank you for making a new committee so we can voice that off on them. But we will be here to think about how to do that. So once again, the strategies communicate, improve data, and research. First of all, market Morris Township to individuals and businesses. We really do not have a very good marketing story to tell. We don't talk about excellence of schools. We don't talk, talk about access to open space. We don't talk about historic significance. I have to say I would love to work at some place like Southgate and in the middle of the afternoon go out and go for a run in the water. I mean, the access people have to those open spaces should be a selling point. I really hope we're able to improve communication between EDAC, the township committee, the planning boards, uh, EDAC and other township uh, committees, the historic committee, open space committee, environmental committee. I'm going to ask the mayor and the committee possibly to have four times a year. Oops, I'm not going to Yeah, I'm an idiot. Sorry. I'm so excited. Um, I know it would be great for the, the chair people of different committees to get together so we're not working across purposes. And you'll see some of the ideas as we put it together that this is a, to be successful, we're gonna need more than one team to work together. And I also think that's critical, and this is the work that Ken really thought long and hard at, is what, what research do we have to do to keep us competitive going forward? What are people gonna look for in the future? Are people gonna demand more sidewalks? Are gonna people demand more bike lanes? Is electronic vehicle charging something we're supposed to look into? These are all things, I don't have the answers, but we all have lots and lots of questions. You know, simply put, what are the target industries going forward? Is there a demand for shared workspace, the we work type concept? These are all things that we can begin to research and think into. So action plans. This is where the meat of the strategy comes forward. Um, we have divided them into what we must do, and we're saying we must do this because it's part of our ordinance. We must create a consistent framework for outreach to businesses and owners of commercial real estate. It's been done more on a haphazard. It's a lot of work, but it's the type of thing every once in a year, try and go out and just ask them questions and do it on a consistent basis with a consistent template. So we're coming back with information that the township committee can use to manage for the future. Um, I think we need to partner with other committees and boards to identify synergistic efforts and regularly communicate updates to them. Once again, that's that synergy between the different committees. We've got a historic committee. Um, we have a lot of people trying to do the right thing. We just kind of figure, we've got to figure out how to communicate better. And I think data collection and analysis is going to be critical also. What we could do, um, you know, research and advise on innovative approaches to redeveloping outdated and unutilized commercial spaces. Part of this is co-working spaces. There are lots and lots of startups, and Ken can share his uh, his uh, where he's now working now. There's a, yeah, his personal experience. There's a great startup space in Morris Township, and that's where people they're starting up a business and they just need a shared space. Is that something we should explore for 340? 
I'm not sure we should, I'm not sure we don't, what are the traffic implications, but we least should ask the right questions. Should we identify and target where the growth industries are going forward? Who do we want to target to get in here? What do those industries need and what are they attracting? I'd like to figure out a way to create a brand for Morris Township. Madison is the Rose City. It's right up on their website. What's Morris Township? Um, we'd love to collaborate with other committees and organizations. And this was you know, that, that story about the historic significance of Morris Township. Can we create an integrated historical experience? Ken's done a great job in his presentation with links to other different areas. He did a lot of research thinking through these different issues. But other towns have come to this realization that sell people on a historic experience. And we have a lot to be proud of here. Um, it's interesting to know, when I moved to Morris Township, I had no idea. But uh, my great, great, whatever, great grandfather, whatever, was at Jockey Hollow. I didn't learn that until I found the research. But Jockey Hollow is as significant in, in the Revolutionary War as Valley Forge. But we take no credit for it. And we've got to tell that story. Um, you know, and, and we've got a lot of different ideas here. Uh, explore programs to build out electric charging vehicle stations. There is money available. Do we have the spaces? Can we help Southgate Plaza and others figure out how to apply for those charging stations? Volkswagen, as a settlement because of their diesel claims, has it there. Liam started down that path. We're trying to think through that. Um, I'm going to take off the uh, innovative ideas to reduce traffic issues, given that we're going to throw someone else under the bus. Do you have anything to add? add? <coughs> uh, um, no one else to throw under the bus, no, okay. but I think this is a great list, and then depending on what the committee wants to see them back. We can, you know, <coughs> so, and in the back, I'll, I'll let you peruse this, but we'd really like from the committee, and we're getting the feedback from the different members of EDAC, what do you think the priority should be for us? Um, Clearly, I think you do need us to reach out to businesses on a consistent basis. I think we need to think about the data we're, we're collecting and modeling going forward. That's stuff we must do. Um, what we can do is this concept of a serve, of a servant comp, of, of, a, of the, what's called a servant concept. It's putting more of an urban atmosphere into a suburbs where people can walk to go get a cup of coffee. Um, I looked at other townships, and a lot of townships around us share the same uh, drawback or the same, they're, they're facing the same issue that there's no town center. Mm -hmm. We're never going to fix one town center, but can we think of different ways of doing this? I think the redevelopment in Col Colgate Palmolive started down that road. The problem is that's on the other side of town. If you look at the township of Math, that little strip can't be more than a mile wide that belongs to Morris Township, it feels like, and then it's bordered by uh, Morris Plains and Morristown. So to bring that concept into the 340 Mount Kimball, do we think ahead of what's going to happen if something, if St. E's falls into financial hardship? Let's, see, let's at least begin to plan and have open dialogue around the committee. So that's my baby. That's why I'm spending a lot of time on that. Uh, Co-work startup incubation space. Go out and, and talk to these people as we're redoing 340 Mount Kimball. Um, I really loved Ken's idea. I'm going to skip ahead on the historic experience for Morris Township. You heard that earlier. Let's tell the story of who we are and get people to think about what, what it is. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll answer any questions. But what I think our next move from you is I'd love to get feedback from the committee on what you think the priorities are. Are there, are there things we've missed? And the other thing I would ask is create some type of a, a and I will be happy to try and organize it some way to get all the different committee chairmen together for an idea of how we work together and make sure we're not working at cross purposes or we're not working on the same thing. So with that, I thank you. One, one small thing. Yes. I did. Let me just bring up the, I think it's page number 10. I just want to kind of go forward. Yeah. So the only thing I just wanted to add is, you know, you'll see this sort of inventory of potential actions and kind of the Kathy Wilson Vermosa, like back end of the Vermosa inventory. I, I just wanted to call to the committee's attention that when we did this, and there were multiple people who Paul mentioned who, who helped with this brainstorming, we tried to actually align the actions to a goal structure that existed in the master plan. So I think it's pretty good but imperfect, but just as you digest more of this information, I just, this is just one of this one table to show you that 
while some of this was, you might say, a fairly creative process, like a fairly, what's a good idea that we heard or saw in other places, we tried to have a bit of a discipline to say, how does any one potential action connect something that's in the original master plan? So hopefully that's a good anchor for anybody who's uh, going through this. Questions? So I want, to, I want to make one additional comment to the public, which maybe I should have prefaced the presentation with. But keeping our commercial space healthy and viable and keeping our commercial tenants in town helps with our tax base. So, you know, we pay very low taxes in our town, and part of that's based on the commercial space. Um, some of our commercial spaces right now is only at 60% occupancy. And the corporations or the corporate tenants pay taxes based on occupancy rate, not just because the building is sitting there, but if it's if it's at 100% occupancy versus 60% occupancy, the township will be taking in more money in taxes, which helps alleviate the burden on the residential portion of our of our tax base that will doesn't have to pick up any differential if we have a healthy commercial space. So the work that EDAC is doing not only helps the township in that respect and in, in promoting business and, and health of the township, but it also helps promote keeping our taxes low as they are today because, as I said, it takes the burden off the residential taxpayer because the commercial taxpayer is going to be paying more with higher occupancy rates. Um, so with that said, I wanted to thank you guys. Clearly, you put in a tremendous amount of thought into this, and I thank you dearly for this document. Um, at the last meeting, you can can mention Kathy's name a couple times. Um, the last meeting, I thank Kathy Wilson for reinvigorating um, the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Um, she took it on as one of her projects at the beginning of the year before handing it over to Paul, who took over as chairman. So I want to thank Kathy for the work she did in reinvigorating the committee. Um, and you guys have really taken it to the next level. Uh, talking to the other committees that we have in town is really important. I actually had a conversation earlier this week with the chair of our environmental commission, and they are looking, they want to look at charging stations too as a, an environmental initiative. So this, it, it crosses, it crosses a, lo a, a lot of areas uh, because corporate clients want it to. So it's, I agree that you guys should be talking. Um, I have, as you saw earlier tonight, I have an 18 year old, and one of the things you do when you apply to college. And maybe they didn't used to do this, but this is what they did this year. You create a, what's called a brag sheet. You know, you put down all of your all of your benefits on one sheet, so you can sort of mold it into something you want to hand off to the college. So it's just a whole list of bullet points about what makes you a great person and why you should be accepted to college. It's a very analogous to what we need to do here in Morris Township: create a brag sheet about what makes us really great. Um, is one thought that came to mind. And then the other thing is when you talked about biking down Southgate Plaza, you also referenced 340 Mount Kimball. Right across the street from 340 Mount Kimball is an entrance to a hiking trail yep. that goes up to what we call Jockey Hollow Top. And it's, it's right there. And I bet those guys at 340 Mount Kimball have no idea that it's there. So that is another good point that you brought up tonight is is educating our corporate clients about all the amenities that we do have here in Morris Township that they could take advantage. It's not just for residents. The corporate clients could take advantage of it too. So those are some really great points you guys made. Um, I'll open it up to the rest of the committee for any comments. Mr. Arvinese, you want to start? Yeah, I just, I just want to say I'm impressed but not, sur impressed but not surprised by the three P's that I noticed with your presentation today. Passion, professionalism, and preparedness. Thank you. Kathy threatened me with death. If I <laughs> and I must say, well, we're going to be talking later about transportation and circulation. So the analogy of throwing people under the bus doesn't really <laughs> jive with the discussions tonight. You have to think of another way of, of saying that. <laughs> That's what we want to try to avoid here in Morris Township. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you for all that you've done. I think the plan that you produced is extraordinary and there's <clears throat> there's so many um, aspects of it that I could highlight here um, the screen that's on the that's up there right now that chart I think that's a great example of um, you know good work this committee is doing uh, to align your actions with the master plan that's that's a great thing to do thank you for that um, I know there's more to the report that you guys didn't show I liked the uh, format there for having the narrative, having what the plan is, and then having the 
the resource, the, the research resources that you could look at. I, one of those ideas was the historic uh, tell your story or how, how did you? So, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Created an integrated historic experience. Here's like a great starting point for doing that. And you ask about priorities. I agree that um, working to you know tell our story and establish a brand. I, I, great idea. I've been is it okay to at once call comment? Sure, go. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't want to be misspeaking at the time. But since um, it, it's funny when you when you put this stuff together and you do some drafting on your own, you're almost second guessing your own draft work and thinking, oh, there's eight or nine good ideas here. I know what my favorite idea. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just be clear. In public, creating an integrated historic experience is everybody's. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime this document's been open, that's what we can speak about. And I'll let you know that I did do a lot of research on it, and I had this feeling, looking through it, excuse me, but like, Dixburg, Mississippi. Dixburg, Mississippi has an awesome brand. They have a fantastic historic experience. I know nothing about Dixburg, Mississippi. But I did the research, and I found it, and I kept looking and saying, Morris Township can do as well as Vicksburg, Mississippi. I know we can. <laughs> that was sort of the reaction when you go through this stuff. So not to create bias, but actually the more you get into it, the more you see the potential of all the things that we have you know, right here in our own community. Yes. Right. By the way, I think and I do want to go to Vicksburg. And, you know, uh, and, and, and since you brought up history again, again and, you know, the, the head of the Morris County Tourism Bureau is actually a Morris Township resident. And I have no doubt that Leslie Bensley would Leslie love Bensley. to talk to you guys yeah. about integrated history because that's that's what her job is. So. I have one other comment. Oh, what? Right. Um, okay. Your emphasis on communication across boards and committees, I, I, I totally agree with that. I think it's very important. A lot of times the different committees are working on things that overlap with each other and that open dialogue and finding ways to encourage that kind of communication across groups, I think is really important. So I thank you for highlighting that. This is a phenomenal job these guys have done. And thank you so much for all your work. And I know you spent a lot of time on it, and it shows. Great. Peter? Well, very impressed. I could not be more impressed after seeing this. I have, wish I had time to read the rest. I will read the rest if I have a chance. but. What I hear you saying and what I'm thinking of is when I started in Morris Township many, many, many years ago, the thing that I emphasized and I think we need to is township. It's our town. We are separate from every other town around. And the things that we do reflect upon what we come up with as ideas and thought processes through the great work that the two of you and the rest of the people have done. So I, I, I laud you and I commend you and I think this was just, uh, you know, one of the best things I've seen uh, people away from our committee do and I thank you very much for your efforts. Um, I'm going to say thank you again. I know you've been hearing that a lot. Um, I did have a few questions and I'll follow up with you both Paul and Ken later on. Sure. Uh, but I was curious if, and I, this may be too early, but what would outreach to our businesses look like from EDAC? Is, is, have you had any thought about what type of program you would put together in terms of, you know, business outreach as a as a group? Uh, Liam and uh, Ari are working on that right now. Um, there have been some uh, outreach to businesses in the past. So we're trying to gather that information going forward. They did do some things on uh, Speedwell. No, where was the, they, mm -hmm. right, Speedwell, that Speedwell corridor. Mm -hmm. So once again, doing that. Um, <clears throat> I know on the township Facebook page, we've highlighted some of the local businesses. We're not doing that, but I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, think about Morris Township in general, we don't have a lot of true business districts, right? There's only, yeah, you know, I color coded my own thing, and that was uh, a terrific map. By the yeah, way. I color coded my own zoning map, and it's amazing when you look at the colors how few business areas we really have. 
and a lot of them, most of them, are concentrated over right on the border, you know, stuck right between Morristown and Morris Plains. There's really no business district, nothing on this side of town, which that's the way it's been historically. Um, you know, we can explore the idea of, you know, is that something we're supposed to think about as we redo 340 Mount Kimball? I don't have the answer. We certainly would have to think about the traffic, but would it actually increase traffic or decrease traffic? And I don't know what the answer is. I'll follow up with you both uh, later on. Thank you very much for your time. Not the only tonight, but putting together this plan. Yeah, so thanks again and for the public. If you didn't get a chance to see, you know, they didn't go through all the slides, but we're going to post this presentation online. Uh, let's let's take one more. I'd like feedback from the committee. But I thought I'd go back to EDAC. To yes, and then let's tonight. let's go to EDAC. That's okay, so yes. once EDAC yeah. signs off on it, we will be posting it on the website, and we'll, I think I'll request that a municipal messenger be sent out, okay. you know, notifying everybody that it's up there because it's really such a wonderful uh, piece of work that you guys have done. So thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you for coming out tonight. Well done. Just a reminder to the public, these guys are volunteers. Everybody who serves on all of our boards and committees, they're, they're all volunteers who put in their own personal time uh, to make Morris Township the great place that it is. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to start honoring people uh, for the work that they've done over the years for Morris Township. So really, again, great jobs, and, and thank you for volunteering to do this.